So in this example problem, what we need to do is we need to solve for the internal forces of members BC, CF, and EF, which are those members here, which I've highlighted in red. And so we have this truss here with three loads on it, all pulling down, and it is pin connected on a wall or something at these two points. And so that's what we're going to be going over in this video. If you want a video going over the steps of the method of sections, you can click on this video link. And I've written down the steps for the method of sections down in the description. You can check that out. If you find it helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So our first step in solving for the internal forces of these members is we need to decide how to cut it. And so in this case, it's pretty easy because you can just cut down the middle of the truss and just cut through those three members. And the next thing you want to decide is which side of the truss you are going to keep. So if we're going to keep this side of the truss, we need to solve for the reaction forces at these two connections. And we would need to do that before we cut the truss so that we can have all of these loads applied. If you didn't and you tried to solve for the reaction forces after you cut it, you would either find that you got the wrong answer and you did it wrong, or you'd find that there are too many unknown forces and you couldn't solve for it. So you need to solve for the reaction forces before you cut it and split it up into two parts. And if you were to keep this other side, there are no reaction forces in this case. And so because the method of sections says that if the truss is in equilibrium, so is every section of that truss, no matter how you cut it. So the internal forces of these members, where we cut it, they would act like external forces to keep that section in equilibrium, and that way we can solve for those internal forces. And so the next step you want to do is you want to draw a free body diagram of the section you kept. And so in this case, we're going to keep this side so we don't have to solve for those reaction forces. But I have solved for both sides, and I've found that they are both the same no matter how you cut it. And I'm pretty sure that's the case in any truss that you will cut using the method of sections. So you get the same internal forces no matter which side you keep. And that's because the method of section works. So we're going to draw our free body diagram over here. So here we have our free body diagram, a simplified version of it, where we have our known forces labeled and our unknown forces labeled, which are the internal forces of those members. And we have our X and Y coordinates or directions labeled and what we need to do now is we need to start solving for those internal forces using moment equilibrium and so first we need to sum moments about a point that will make it so there's only one unknown force and that way we can solve for it and so choosing a point that will have two of the forces past the right would have to be point C because CF passes through this point and BC also passes through that point. Another one we could do is we could sum moments about point F, which even though it's not on the truss or the part of the section of the truss that we kept, we could still sum moments about that point and it will cancel out these two forces and we could solve for BC. But we're gonna sum moments about point C and that will be the sum of the moments about point C equals zero because it's in equilibrium and so this force cancels out, this force cancels out, and this force cancels out because they won't cause rotation. And so we are left with EF and the 800 pounds. And so EF is going to cause counterclockwise rotation, which we will say is positive. So EF multiplied by four, because it is four foot away from point C, minus the 800 pounds because it is causing clockwise rotation and it is also four foot away from point C. And so we'll add this over the other side, divide by four on both sides, which we can see would cancel out those two fours. And so we get that E uh, equals 800 pounds. So we're going to write that over here. And because it came out positive, we know that we drew our arrow correctly. And since we drew it going towards the center of the member, that means it is in tension. So we'll label that as being in tension. So now we want to sum forces 
or moments about a different point that will cancel out one of these two forces so that we can solve for the other one. And we could pick point B, which CF doesn't pass through, or we could pick point F, which force BC doesn't pass through, and it doesn't really matter which one we pick. I'm going to pick point F so that we can eliminate this force and solve for BC. So the forces remaining, this one gets cancelled out, this one gets cancelled out, but the other three are still there. Force BC is going to cause counterclockwise or clockwise rotation. So it will say it's negative. It is four feet away, so we'll multiply it by four. 600 pounds is also going to cause clockwise rotation, so it's negative, so 600 it is also four foot away. And then 800 pounds is also going to cause count clockwise rotation. So we will label it as negative, and it is eight feet away, so we'll multiply it by eight. So you multiply these two together, add this over to the other side, combine them, and then multiply both sides by negative, so you can get rid of this negative and divide it by four. And so BC equals negative 2,200 pounds. And because it's negative, we know that our arrow is backwards, so it is not in tension, it is actually in compression. So we'll write that over here with it being in C for compression. And so now we just need to solve for one more force, CF, and there are a couple ways to do that. We could sum moments about a point where CF repels rotation, or we can use the sum of the forces in the x and y direction and break this force up into its x and y components. Because we know the geometry of this triangle, or this truss, we can create a triangle here. And because this side is four foot long and this side is four foot long, we know that this angle between this truss and horizontal is 45 degrees. And so either way works, and I think either way is about the same difficulty. I'm going to use the sum of the forces in the x and y direction, but I'm going to show you how to do the sum of the moments. And so what we will notice here is that the member CF goes this way, and if we sum forces about point B, we would need to draw a perpendicular line coming off of this member CF to point B to have a moment arm. And that would create a triangle here, where this is a 90 degree angle, and this is the hypotenuse. Well, we know that this side is four feet. We would not need to solve for this side to find the length of the moment arm to multiply that by CF in our equilibrium or moment equation. And so we would have to find the length of this beam and because this is a 45 degree angle, it would be half the length of that beam. And then we would solve using the Pythagorean theorem, we'd solve for this side of that triangle. And so the way you do it with the sum of the forces in the x and y direction, we will say that this is member CF, this is the hypotenuse, and this is the x component of that we'll call it CF sub x, and this is the y component of it. We'll call it CF sub y. And we know that this angle between there is 45 degrees, so we'll label that in here. And CF multiplied by the sine of 45 degrees is CF sub y. So that is our y component, and for the x component, it'd be multiplied by cosine. So the cosine of 45 degrees equals CF sub x. And if you know trig, then you know the cosine and the sine of 45 degrees is the same thing. So both of these components would be the same. Doesn't really matter in this case, but if we're going to sum forces in either direction, we'll do x that equals zero. And we have BC, which this arrow is drawn backwards. So it's actually going in the positive x direction. So 2,200 minus EF, which is 800, it's going in the negative x direction, so 800 
minus because the x component of this is also going in any x direction. We have CF cosine of 45 degrees. And so you'll add these up, subtract this over to the other side, or add it over to the other side, and divide both sides by the cosine of 45 degrees, and you end up getting that CF equals 1,900 and 80 pounds. And because it came out positive, we know that we drew our arrow in the right direction, so it is in tension, and we will write that over here. Alright guys, that's how you solve for the internal forces of the member of the truss using the method of sections. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments. Again, I've also got the steps for the method of sections down in the description. You can check that out. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, I'm student engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So, if you want more videos like this, please subscribe.